What is going on guys and girls, Level Up here at On Point Tactical. This is a live gameplay commentary uh, on Parasol Storm, and if we run over um, oh, past the first game of Domination, then we'll go ahead and play another one, there's nothing stopping us from doing that. This will be live gameplay commentary, like I said, we're playing with the F2000, uh, which I have been enjoying, but I haven't got all the stuff I want for it, I haven't got my Cobra sight, so my gameplay is going to be a little rusty along with the fact that I've been playing with the Gull Sniper Magnum. Uh, all day, so my uh, assault rifle gameplay is going to be a little bit uh, subpar. It looks like we're getting pub stomped by some 100s. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, most of them are on my team. But uh, anyway, the subject matter of the video, if you read the title, is to is how to aim better in Battlefield 4, right? Well, there is a method to my madness, and I've tested it. I haven't tested it uh, just on myself. I've had a couple buddies do it. And they agree with me that it is effective. So far I've had a 100% effectiveness ratio, so we'll see how that goes. And tell me down in the comments box below if it works. But we need you... Uh, this is going to be part of the On Point Tactical Training. It's going to be for my subscribers, and if you're not subscribed already, uh, don't feel pressured to do so, but uh, you can still participate in the challenge. Just know that it is primarily targeted towards my subscribers. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to play 10 games of Domination, okay? It doesn't matter what what DLC, uh, it doesn't matter if you're getting pub smashed, it doesn't matter if you're playing with a bunch of retarded randoms on your side, like, as I am right now. You are going to play 10, 10 games of Domination, and the reason I say 10 games of Domination is because it's all about gunplay, and Domination is very consistently in between 9 and 15 minutes. I've rarely had matches go outside of that time zone, so we can make sure that we're playing on a very consistent time basis. And you're going to use a loadout as follows. You're going to use the Mark 11 or the M39. Only those two DMRs. Okay? And along with that, you're going to run the M1911 or the Compact 45. Now the goal of this is that you have to make your shots count in close quarters with both. You have to make your first shot count, your second shot count, and your third shot count to be able to drop somebody. And if you miss one, or, well, if you miss two, or, or sometimes if you, if you miss even just one shot, that's going to get you slaughtered. So you have to have your accuracy up. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to suck. It's going to suck for the first, like, five matches, I'd say. It's going to be horrible. It's going to be a terrible experience. You're going to be wanting to punch me in the face. You're going to be like, well, what's the, what's the entire purpose of this? All I'm doing is getting slaughtered by these guys. There's, there's no point to this. Okay? Keep in mind that I said 10 matches for a reason, and what's happening while you're playing with this DMR with no aim assist, mind you, turn aim assist off, because that's that's the entire purpose. If you have aim assist, then you don't need to aim better, because the game is taking care of it for you, and it's basically just a dice and played aim bot, which I do not agree with from a balancing standpoint, or from a competitive standpoint. But, either way... After, like I said, after about five games, you're going to be feeling the butt hurt, the aggravation is going to start to mount, and you're going to be wanting to hit me in the face. But what's happening during this entire process, and you won't know it, it's, it happens subconsciously, like you have no idea it's happening, but your brain, since you're, since you're a human, I'm guessing that most of you are human, we probably don't have very many ghouls or aliens watching the channel, your brain is going to adapt to having to land that first shot and having to land the second shot. You're going to get better reaction time over your aim, and I pressure you to push yourself outside of your comfort zone. Don't feel pressured to stay at a distance with the DMR. Get up close and in their face like you would with a PDW or an assault rifle or a carbine. That's part of how this is going to work, is you have to be just as aggressive as you would normally. But the only difference is that you have to use a DMR and you have to make your shots land. At this point, your brain is already adapting, and you're getting used to landing these shots. Now, this isn't just like some philosophical nightmare where, like, it's just a theory, and it hasn't, and I haven't tried it out. I've tried it out, and it's worked not only for me, but it's worked for everyone else that I've had try it. I've had about ten people try it so far, and they agree with me that it does, in fact, work. If you want to improve your accuracy even further, you can go for something like the Scar-H and swap it over to semi-auto so you have to land four shots to the chest in close quarters if you really want to, cha if you really want to challenge yourself. 
uh, or not four shots to the chest at uh, close quarters, four shots to the chest at long range, as opposed to just the straight up three shots at all distances that you get out of the DMRs. You can do that, you're more than welcome to. I didn't find it all that necessary, and uh, I, I found myself to improve my gameplay even just using the M39 or the Mark 11. And these weapons are far from perfect. If you've ever used them, you know what I mean. Their recoil is a little hard to manage, and without a grip, because we're running no attachments on the Mark 11 or the M39, the recoil is a little bit crazy, because the first shot multiplier really just sort of plagues these guns and makes them a little bit more difficult to use than they should be. But uh, I get it. I mean, it's primarily for balancing purposes. I, I totally understand DICE's position on this. But... Um, after after the tenth match has rolled around and you swap back to your automatic weapon or your or your favorite weapon, the eleventh match, you you don't even know it's happening. But if you've played these games all the way through without rage quitting, and without without looking at the scoreboard, don't worry about your KDR. Your precious KDR doesn't actually mean anything. There, I mean, you can be a good player and have a .8 KDR. You can be a horrible player and have a 3.0 KDR, okay? You have to keep this in mind. The KDR is just a number, score per minute is just a number, your actual gameplay in-game is going to be far different from these numbers most of the time, your skill rating is just a number. So don't worry about these numbers, they don't mean anything, and any competitive player will tell you this very same thing that I'm telling you now. But like I said, you've you've been adapting. So by the eleventh match, whenever you swap back to your automatic weapons or your four sixteen or whatever your favorite weapon is, you should be at this point just like beast mode on and destroying your opponents. The reason this, that this happens is because as a human, your brain functions in a way where it's very adaptive. And if you have poor reaction time, this is a great way to speed it up. Also, because if you were able to get, to, if you were able to bring your KDR up. By like, by, like, the eighth game to, you know, slightly below average, maybe not up to your average, but if you got it to where you were slightly below average for your KDR, then you're probably making good progress, especially if you've never used the DMR as much. And like I said, if, if you're using them in the very aggressive manner that I'm telling you to, not just hanging in the backfield, then you're going to get a little bit of rage, you're going to get a little bit of butthurt, it's going to mount about halfway through. And once you get to that 8th round, you should be picking up a bit, and you should be adapting to where it's not so bad using this DMR after all. And at this point, like I said, you, you've, your brain has already started to adapt to it, and your reaction time has started to close. You've learned to make your shots count. And this is not a one-time fix. This is not you do it, your aim is better, and it's over. You're going to have to revisit this every week or, you know, just like set a goal for yourself, like two or three times a week I'm going to play ten games of domination with a DMR and that's it. Iron sights to make your vision, or uh, to make your sight picture a little bit more obstructed so you have to really focus in on your targets, but you also have to have target prioritiz prioritization at the same time and good situational awareness so you don't get bullet smacked from the side of the face. After this has all happened, you should see a big performance increase with your automatic weapons. Like I said, it's not a one-time fix. You're going to have to go back and revisit this. And uh, I've been doing this since the launch of Battlefield 4, uh, off and on. I haven't done it strictly enough, I would say. I've done it uh, every time I swing back around to a DMR and start playing with it. I notice these changes starting to happen, even if I didn't play a full 10 games. I just, I just noticed it... Uh, a little bit, and then that's whenever I really sort of sort of invested time in seeing if this was not just a placebo effect, if it was actually something that was happening, or if I was just crazy. And uh, after I found out that it was working for my buddies too, I thought, well, maybe I should go ahead and share this with you guys and make it sort of a subscriber-based challenge. And I thought, well, maybe this would be a good sort of series. We're going to call it On Point Tactical Training. We're going to do these challenges like this. You guys are going to tell me your success. I'm going to give you guys my success. We're going to interact in this sort of manner. You guys are going to link up with me on Battlefield. We're going to play Battlefield, hopefully. And uh, it should be quite the fun thing to do. Now, this is, this is step one to increasing your aim. We're going to move on to step two later on, and then we're going to get around to a survival guide after we have finished how to aim better. We have a, an advancement on this a little bit later. Uh, it's not DMRs. You're not going to have to go back go back to the DMRs if that's what you're dreading. Uh, but in fact, it is much worse, and the aggravation is going to mount much higher. But we will get around to that 
later on. So let, let's revisit the steps from start to finish because uh, at this point I've probably lost you a little bit in the mix. Uh, but that's okay. I, I I've been sort of rambling. I'm like I said, it's live gameplay, so uh, or live commentary, so it's a little hard to stay on track of what you've said, what you haven't said, because you, there's so much going on in the game. You're trying to think on the game and about what you're saying, and also not rage into the microphone because that's not a good thing. Whenever your team fails you miserably or you get a bad respawn, whatever it is, uh, if you've ever done a live commentary, you know what I mean. So, step one is you play as normal. If you've been noticing that your aim uh, without aim assist is just not very good, or if you've just been wanting to increase it uh, from a good aim already, you're going to want to run with the M39 or the Mark 11. Only these two DMRs I've found have had much success. The SKS is too spammy. You don't really have to be accurate with it. Be the way that the spread increase factor works on the Mark 11 and the M39, you have to make your shots count, but you have to space them out. You don't just tap fire, spam fire it like you do the uh, SKS, which is, I mean, it, SKS is a great rifle, don't get me wrong, I like that DMR, but pretty much spam fire is the only way to get anything done with it, and uh, that's not the sort of gameplay that we're looking for here. Uh, so if you want to graduate to your preferable red dot about by the fifth game, of domination with the Mark 11 or the M39, you can do so, but just keep in mind that that is going to hurt your aim a little bit, even if it's just a slight amount. I, if you're looking for this tip, you're either just not a very good aimer, you're looking to be like one of the best of the best of the best aimers out there, and if you're looking for that, then you're going to want maximum results, which means you're going to want to run with the iron sights. Now this sounds like a nightmare, but it's sort of like it's sort of like working out. You're going to have to stick to it. You're going to have to do it pretty consistently to really notice the effects over a long period of time. You're going to notice it the, that first afternoon and probably that next day. But I would say, as a general rule, play 10 games of domination with the DMR uh, twice a week, and then at least two or three games uh, a day that you play domination with the DMR to start your day. Just jump in with the DMR. Uh, iron sights, and then just you know go ham for three rounds. Even if it's if the even if the rage starts to mount, it's going to refresh your brain of you know what your aiming te technique is and uh, how you had your your reaction time reduced that 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 day before, or you know if it, if you just decided to do it again that same day, it's the same basic idea. So once you have gone through the fifth round, your brain is already adapting. If you want to upgrade to that red dot sight, that's fine. And then you're going to finish, and by the 8th round, your KDR should be around a 1.0 or around average uh, of your KDR, you know, depending on what, what your KDR is. If your KDR is a 3, then you should be expecting to see like a 1.8 or a 2 at this point. If your KDR is a 2, then you should be expecting about a 1 or a 1.5 at this point. Don't expect amazing results out of these DMRs, because at this point, they, they hurt in close quarters, they really do. Push yourself to get into close quarters. Don't just don't just sit in the backfield and try to snipe people from across the map with the DMR. That's what it's designed for. That's what it's good at. We're not trying to focus on what the DMRs are good for. We're trying to focus on making your aim better. And the primary way that we're doing this is we're forcing you to use the DMRs in close quarters, and you have to make those shots count. If you can get a headshot in there, that's amazing. So after the after the eighth round, your KDR should be returning back to normal. And then whenever you swap back to your favorite weapon, uh, in my case, I switch. I swapped right back to the F2000 on that 11th game, then you should be just beast mode on, and uh, you should be on your way. So as this match comes to a close and my commentary comes to an end, to recap, just go down to the comments box, tell me your success with it, tell me if it didn't work, uh, you know, if there's any other ideas that you might have to improve your combat effectiveness or improve your team play aspects. If there's some other sort of tips and tricks video you want to see like this, let me know down let me know while you're down there in the comments box below because I would love to hear your thoughts. All of you in the in the comments box, I always leave my PlayStation Network ID and uh, I get friends requests constantly uh, from from people that I play with that I don't really care about and from you guys. When you send me a friends request, 
send a message with it that says I'm from YouTube because I have so many people following me around that I play with in public matches that it's really hard for me to keep track of who I want in my friends list and who I don't. So it's it's one of those things where like I, I don't mean to sound pushy, but that's just sort of how it has to be. So if you enjoyed the video, go down to the comments box below. Tell me your success. While you're down there, go ahead while you're down there, go ahead and leave a like. It would mean a whole lot to me. So as always, thanks for watching. I'm level up here at On Point Tactical. I hope that you guys have a wonderful day and I hope to see you all on the battlefield.